And let's come back to your point about a positive vision for the future and why conservatives uh, will struggle with that. I think one of the reasons is that inevitably young people do need to rebel against something and conservative instinctively want to suppress all rebellion because they want to avoid change. And that's why as someone who's kind of some, I call myself politically non-binary, that's why I'm excited about talking about this political vision uh, and positive, not political, a positive vision of the future because I think that's what's needed and I don't think the anti-woke position, which a lot of us have had to engage in for some time, uh, is going to be the answer because you have to have something that people buy into and it can't be normative in the way that conservatives often want it to be. You must do this. That's not going to work with young people. They don't want that. What they want is something that allows them to channel their rebellion into something heroic and productive, as you said, which is why I think showing young people the way out of wokeness through what I talked about in the speech and what you and I just talked about, which is work hard, build and create. That is going to be the way. And um, I think uh, I, you, you probably know my friend, Melissa Chen. Uh, she tweeted something about this years ago that I thought it was so spot on. She said, um, you cannot remake, remain woke if you build anything, whether that's a business, whether that's muscle, whether that's a family. And that's why I challenge these kids at the Oxford Union and, and the audience who were watching, of course, to build and create things. Because the moment you start, you suddenly find out that, hey, just whining about stuff doesn't work. And when you get down to the business of doing things, turns out there's a reason the way things are the way they are. There's a reason things don't work quite the way you'd like them to, because reality suddenly comes into conflict with ideology. And so that's why I think it's so important to give kids and young people a path to doing things because it's only when you're doing things that you start to realize the limitations. And the, the, you know, the, the, I'm a huge fan of Thomas Sowell, and this is one of his things that, uh, that he always says, that there are no solutions, only trade-offs. And you only learn this as a young person by the experience of doing stuff. Because when you're young, you come at the world and you go, well, the world isn't perfect, I must perfect the world. And no one's explained to you, and you probably didn't listen if they tried to explain to you, uh, the, the fact is the world is not perfectible. The world will always be imperfect, and all you can do is tinker at the edges to try and improve it. So one of the things I've noticed on my tour, one of the things that's perplexed me, let's say, is that I wrote these books that are full of rules, and you might think that that would turn people off for the reasons that you just described, young people being turned off by, let's call it conservative moralizing. Mm. And that's a kind of finger shaking. You should. Mm -hmm. And should is if you were doing your duty. It's something like that. Yes. And look, you should do your duty. And But you can also understand why young people would chafe against that because, well, why should they be certain that doing their duty in that in exactly the same manner that duplicates the past is the best pathway forward, because sometimes it clearly isn't. And there are inadequacies of the past that need to be rectified. So the conservatives stumble in relationship to establishing uh, a bridge to young people by being moralizing. And the more evangelical types of, say, fundamental Christians fall into the same problem. Now, one of the things I've noticed, and this has been very, very cool, and I've really tested this in hundreds of venues, is I usually sometime in one of my lectures, in my lectures, talk about the relationship, the necessity of finding meaning as, a, as the antithesis of suffering, let's say, because the quest for meaning becomes most compelling when you're simultaneously suffering or someone you love is suffering. Uh, that's when the that's when the arrow finds its mark, let's say. And I walk people through a thought exercise, I suppose, is, well, what do you have when you're suffering that's going to sustain you? And you might say, well, you have the work that you're still capable of doing and the fruits of your labor that might offer you some security. You have whatever creative enterprises you might be able to engage in that still contain the shadow of meaning, at least. Then you have your intimate relationship and the person who might be caring for you while you're in dreadful condition, and you have your family and your friends. And that's really what you have. And then on the abstract end, you know, maybe you have beauty and truth and justice and, you know, the noble ideals. But then you might ask yourself, well, how do you, how do you have the 
the armament of work and creative endeavor and friends and family? And the answer to that is that's in precise proportion to the amount of responsibility you've taken for developing those relationships and those abilities. That's right. And so there's a clear pathway between the voluntary adoption of responsibility and the meaning that will sustain you through suffering. And that's a much better enticement to participation for young people than a kind of finger-wagging top-down morality, which is you must behave this way, mm -hmm. you know, or you're no good. And even though, I, as I said, there's some truth in that, it's not an invitational vision. No. And I, I think that there's a way to summarize that very neatly, Jordan, which is what I know would work for me, which is to say, there are things that you want. What are they? And if you want those things, this is what you need to do. You don't have to do it. I'm not saying you must do it. I'm not your dad. But if you want to achieve these outcomes that you care about, then you are going to have to put in the work. And I'm not telling you which outcomes you should pursue necessarily, but the way to get there isn't going to be to glue yourself to a road to stop an ambulance getting to a hospital, which is what these Extinction Rebellion people do here in the UK. And I think that once people, young people are on that path, we don't get to control the art and the culture that they're going to create. That is their path and that is their duty and that is their job to do. Uh, but if if they are doing it from a place of constructive taking on responsibility, as you say, putting in the effort, building and creating things for the future, then I think that is part of the vision for them. Because as you say, I think we live in a society particularly now you know, I'm not a religious person, but it's clear to me that uh, with the death of God, you end up in a position where a lot of people lack meaning. And of course, you've got all sorts of other economic disincentives for people to have meaning. It's harder to start a family. Uh, people are deferring it uh, until a later point. I myself, you know, I just turned 40 and we had our first child only a year ago, less than a year ago. So a lot of young people are in that position now. And it's having that experience that changes you. Uh, it makes you more responsible. It forces you to take on responsibility. It also forces you to look at the world in a different way. So uh, that I think is part of the vision. Uh, and uh, you know, talking about family is difficult because again, you get to the normative position where it's like you must have children, uh, which is not what I'm saying at all. But again, I think if you start from the incentive point of view, my experience of life is that people respond first and foremost to the incentives that are in front of them. And if you want, if you lack meaning, if you don't know what to do with your life, then finding an intimate partner and having a family is going to be a big part of that, in addition to meaningful work, et cetera.